honey bun anyone in your life that you know is toxic and that does not belong there they're literally not serving you in any way if anything they're just making things worse it's time to cut it off okay and this might be a sign for some people some people might really need to hear this but i feel like a lot of us want to hold on to these toxic relationships because either we're settling either we don't think we can do better or we're lonely once you cut this negativity out of your life all that it will do is open up the opportunities for positive people to come for for experiences to come that is serving you but when you keep this toxicity and negativity in your life it's just going to be more patterns of that over and over so i really hope this helps someone because this toxic she didn't come here to be toxic okay we want peace love light happiness all Modern women HR speak <laughs> is what I see it as. I am no man's peace. I talk back and I talk sh What? <laughs> Do you know these guys? Got to. <laughs> <laughs> this girl at work said something to me the other day and i like can't get it out of my head I heard a baby around her i was like oh god that's free birth control for me and she's like oh that makes me think of my little baby and i was like yeah i'm too selfish i don't want kids like i have a dog that's enough for me a couple of days later she's like so you don't want kids but you have a dog do you have like a boyfriend or anything and i was like no i've never had a boyfriend she's like how old are you i said 27 she's like and you've never had a boyfriend and i like never really cared but there's something about her like saying that it really hit me this time because like i've never been on even, like you. two dates with the same person like even guys i've talked to or like hooked up with they'll slowly stop talking to me and then i find out they have a girlfriend or they get into a new relationship like a week later and like when i was younger and i didn't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend i'd be like it's because i'm fat i used to weigh like 320 pounds i lost mm. 160 pounds it's not like i'm Good being hit up every day every week even every month with like people in my dms or like messaging me on snapchat trying to get with me it's like no one hits me up it's not even like i'm being selective with who i'm picking and like turning people away it's just like people aren't coming up to me i don't i don't understand not like i have an issue with people like wanting to hook up with me but if it tries to go a step further they're like absolutely not no i don't want to just like hook up with random people that i don't know so i'll tell people that i don't want to hook up with them until i know them and then they're like well you're a prude i'm like i literally can't win why it's like hitting me so hard this time is the fact that she had the audacity to ask by choice and i just sit there and i'm like no <laughs> It's not by choice. When I was younger, I, was I mean, there's a lot of women out here, modern women specifically, that say, I'm single by choice. So she's like, oh, do you must want to be single by choice? Because surely at 27, you've had a boyfriend. Like somewhere, somebody has gotten into a relationship with you. That's why she's asking. I mean, just because somebody asks you a question doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Modern women and this audacity word, it's gotta go. It's like, oh, it's because I'm fat. Oh, it's because I'm fat. fat. Once I lose weight, I'll have no problem. And now that I'm like, not fat. And you're broken inside, man. And it's like, what is it? What is the reason? So now I'm gonna finish my energy drink and hit the gym until I can't feel my emotions anymore. Yikes. Maybe that's the- No, ma'am. I, I honestly think in all seriousness, you've got a lot going on. And there's a lot of people that try to go to the gym and lose weight or they try to do something because they want to be accepted instead of like doing it for themselves and it being a sense of accomplishment for them. And it doesn't mean that you're like, man, I saw people looking at me and I was like, you know what? I came to the realization that I did actually want to lose weight. So, man, I got in that gym and, and I really worked hard and now I'm proud of myself for doing that. I, I did that, man. I went in there and I accomplished something for myself. Modern women will do this for the accolade and the validation of others, which is nice to get a compliment, but 
this is what you end up with losing weight. It's like, man, I lost weight and nobody still wants me. And I get it's probably frustration. She probably did it for herself. But what you're saying to me now indicates to me that you probably need to do a little bit more work on yourself and fix something in there. Like you, it's like you follow trends. Like instead of being your own person, you're looking at what everybody else might say looks good and what everybody else might want. And then you're like, well, if they're doing it, then I'm going to do it because it, it must be the thing to do. You have to be your own person, period. Reason. A few moments later. And one day I'm going to have eyes as blue as the summer sky. They ain't never in a million years going. Not me. Just now realizing that I have to walk around downtown Phoenix. Just like a Sabrina. When I catch you, Sabrina. Sabrina. When I catch you, Sabrina. Why'd you have to make this the aesthetic? I think I was looking at her videos and I saw that she was talking about Sabrina Carpenter. So apparently she's going to some type of Sabrina Carpenter um, concert, which is great. But I mean, your hair looks nice. So kudos for that. I mean, you're trying a little bit more. But I think that's what a lot of modern women do is they follow trends. And it, it's almost a lot of people follow trends, right? But then it's. It's a problem when you become the trend, like it, it's all that you are, like your identity is wrapped up in, oh, well, that's what everybody else is doing. So I want to do that. Oh, man, that's good. They look good doing it. I'm going to do that. Right. And you lose yourself. There's a way to, to follow a trend and, and, and do it your way and, and to do whatever you need to do while keeping yourself. It's a fresh new perspective on the trend and it's a fresh new perspective on who I am. But unfortunately, a lot of modern women, and I think once again, she has this problem. They lose their self in what society is telling them to do and who society is telling them to be. And then they end up in the car crying because people are like, that's not really who you are. Like, you don't seem genuine. And that frustrates them even more because like, it's like, I'm trying to do what everybody says they, that I, that I'm supposed to be doing right. Which is good. But you, anyway, I think you need to do it for yourself. You need to figure out who you actually are and be happy with that. Should you lose weight? Maybe so, but be healthy, live long for yourself and work on your confidence. Like really, in my opinion. I've realised that a lot of the men that I've dated in the past um, did think that I was going to be like their mum and that's why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to sit here and be a housewife to you because I want to go out and I actually want to have fun and I want to enjoy my life. Go and ahead. I feel like you need to be careful with the type of men that you date. And very early on, you need to set that boundary that I am not your mum. Okay. I feel like that's why the black dating scene is struggling so much because a lot of black men are seeing their women, I've, their, their mums being either really amazing, strong, single mums that don't need help, they're hyper-independent. So they're looking at you like, why why wouldn't you go 50-50? My mum would pay for the whole bill. Or they're watching their mums be cheated or left, right and centre and not leaving. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at you like, why are you, not, why are you not dealing with this? This is what I know a woman to be like. And I feel like that is where the disconnect is coming from. A lot of you guys think we're your mums. I'm not your mum. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not your mum. I'm going to go out to brunch with my friends. You can cook for yourself. No, I'm not your mum. You're going to look after the kids this weekend. Whether or not you know how to make Weetabix, you're going to find out I'm not your mum. No, I am going to go on holiday with my friends and do whatever I want and come back whenever I want because I'm an adult, because I'm not your mum. I feel like a lot of people need to stop dating, thinking of their mum. And I know it's psychology, but mm -hmm. as women, we have a responsibility to let people know I'm not your mum. So if your dad didn't let your mum out, that's got nothing to do with me because I'm not your mum. Okay? I'm not your mama. Fine. I think this is a, a very silly take, to be honest with you. I think it's a very silly couple of things that you had to say. I'm going to go on holiday with my friends and I'm not going to come back until I feel like it. You have kids at home. <laughs> so that is it's kind of irresponsible, don't you think, to leave not just him, but like the kids. Like there's so many women that complain about men that don't help out around the house and then you would turn around and do something like that. Forget the man. You would turn around and do something like that to your kids. 
especially if the man is trying to be a leader in your household and say, I, I don't think that you should go there. I think your friends are, they're not good people. I don't think that you should be hanging around them. I don't think it's good for our relationship. I don't think it's good for you. I don't think it's good for you. I think they're a terrible influence on you. Well, I'm going to do this and I da, 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 da. Then you can be single. That's what you need to be. It, it doesn't have anything to do with being somebody's mom. It has to do with being an adult. Apparently, it doesn't seem like you have, you've gotten that memo. That's just how adults in partnerships act. They check in with one another. They talk to one another. This is something that's voluntary and you don't have to do it. So if you don't want to be in a relationship, then you don't have to. But all I'm saying is don't be mad when that man dogs you out. You're like, why you even want to be with me then if you're doing all this and that and da, 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 da. Well, I'm growing. I can do whatever I want to do and I can come back whenever I want to come back. And y'all be mad if a man said that. Somebody else. This is about to be the most unhinged I've ever sent on TikTok. But girlies, we don't need guys to make our legs shake. You just need to sign up for a 50 minute class at Solid Core. At least that doesn't come with the extra uh, man. of dating. Shut up. <laughs> I dated 50 men in three years and it broke me. And this is everything I learned along the way. Number one, never give second chances. Men know how to behave and they know that they are treating you poorly. No man has ever shown me that it was worth giving him a second chance. If someone is your person, they will do things right the first time. Number two, leave in silence. I used to get really pissed off at how poorly I was being treated by guys and I would write paragraph after paragraph telling these men about themselves. But never once did they fire. It never made them take a long, hard look at their actions and their behaviors. Because as I said before, men know what they're doing. You'll just come across as overly emotional. He'll get a massive ego boost because he knows you care deeply and that he's really upset you. And he might even ghost you and not even reply. Even worse, he might laugh at the messages with his friends. Dating got so much better when I learned to reward bad behavior with my silence and my absence. And I started walking away with my dignity intact and my head held high. You'll never regret saying nothing about how somebody treated you, but I definitely think you can regret saying too much. Number three, do not believe his words or his actions. Few men in the dating pool are actually honest and upfront. And since talk is cheap, we're taught to ignore his words and pay attention to his actions. Mm -hmm. Do you know what, ladies? Men have cottoned on to this now. In 2024, these men are doing the most with their actions in order to get what they want from you. So this is what you do instead. Observe his actions listen to his words and believe whichever one is worse oh and never believe anything that a man says before the first three to four months of dating since it takes at least that long for a person to reveal their true character doing this will also protect you from love bombing mm. number four match their energy it's horrible when you feel a person's energy shift and they start speaking to you less the dates become few and far between and you can just tell something is off when this happens, it's really tempting to like reach out, work harder, ask them what's wrong, show them why you're worth speaking to and why they should be making time for you. You need to stop and remember, we all make time for what we want to make time for. Nobody is too busy and people are rarely going through something that means they can't date or spend time with someone that they like. Right. If a person's energy has changed, either there's somebody else that's got their interest or they're just not that into you. Dating relationships and friendships should all be 100% reciprocal. So if a man is pulling away, please just assume he's not asked about you and do not lace up your trainers and run after him. Number five, lying is a deal breaker. This means lying in any form. Oh, so yes, even man. white lies and lying by omission. If you don't have trust in a relationship, you've got absolutely nothing. And you will certainly never have peace if you cannot trust your partner. Also, you need to trust patterns. Behavior is usually always a pattern. If someone has lied to you repeatedly, they're compulsive. That's who they are, and they are never going to change. Looking back, I cannot believe there was a man that I tried so hard with, and I was so desperate to make things work with, when, when I'd caught him lying multiple times. Dating a liar will be the most miserable relationship of your life. Now, I like to tell people that lying is a deal breaker for me early on, <laughs> and then if they don't take heed of that, I'm ready to walk away. One lie and I'm out of here. Number six, stop dating people that you are not attracted to. 
We're often told as women that it's wrong to feel a strong spark when you meet someone and that that's your nervous system overreacting because it's someone that's bad for you. And we're also told we should give the nice guy more of a chance, date down, settle. By my experience, if you do not feel a spark or attraction within the first three dates, it's probably never going to come. You deserve to have a partner that you are attracted to and your partner deserves to be dating someone that is really attracted to them. And you don't want to be making them feel insecure because deep down they will know if you don't fancy the pants off them. And the longer it all goes on, the more of your time you'll waste and you'll also hurt them in the process. So please hold out for someone that you actually fancy. I'd much rather be single now than date a man I don't fancy. Seven, your cutoff game needs to be strong. Looking back, the majority of the guys I dealt with who turned out to be shit major red flags at the start. Mm -hmm. And I just ignored them. Exactly. Either because I really fancied the guy and wanted it to work or because I was bored, wanted male validation and just thought, it, got nothing else going on, I'll date him anyway. But the more that you heal and the less that you need male validation, the easier it is to cut men off for red flags. If anything, it becomes too easy and you become a freaking savage. Red flags should be an enormous turn off to you. They are basically alarm bells that say something's off or simply this does not meet my standards, my values and my needs. And since dating is a luck slash numbers game, you want to be filtering through men as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So always listen to your gut and cut off the red flags ASAP if you're looking for something serious. Obviously, if you're not, we can let the odd red flag slide. Number eight, casual sex isn't worth it 75% of the time. And I'm actually running out of time, so I'm going to have to finish this in a part two. No, you don't need to do a part two. Part one was enough. Uh, I think it was complete and utter foolishness. Maybe a couple of points in there that actually made sense. But I was just doing a little math down here on my notepad. 50 men in three years. That's what, 16 men a year, 16.6 .6 repeating. Um, and then a seven, basically. So 16.6 six .6 repeating. There's 12, year, 12, 12 months in a year. So that's a little under a man and a third of a man. Maybe if you really wanted to do the rounding, a man and a half. So if you wanted to get technical, you could say that's you're dating a man and then just kind of like, and eh, kind of like talking to a man on the side every single month for three years is what you're doing. You've got your main man and then you've just got somebody in between time that's kind of taking up a third or a fourth of your time, maybe even up to half your time, right? So you're always pretty busy and preoccupied. Um, so you talking about your experience, uh, that, that doesn't mean anything, right? Because uh, I knew I was going to hear it. I ignored the red flags. I wanted male validation sometimes and I was bored, yada, yada, yada. Uh, dating is a numbers game. When I when I hear that from people, it, it just lets me know that they're not paying attention, right? Obviously, you've got to get uh, you got to get out there to know what you want, go on some dates, right? But but fifty dates, uh, fifty fifty men in in three years is is absolutely crazy, and for you to just now be coming to the light of some of these things, uh, you could have actually actually watched this on YouTube. I, I believe I strongly believe a lot of this stuff you could have learned. Within a year, if you're dating 12 men, like if you've gone through 16 men in a year, um, you should have known pretty much what you weren't, weren't looking for because 16 men, you, you dated the dude for a month. So you had plenty of time to date and talk to this guy for like four or five weeks, depending on which month it was <laughs> and, and you couldn't figure out if this wasn't or was the guy for you in that time period these modern women are out here playing games that's number one number two you said casual intimacy isn't worth it 75 percent of the time so let's say 50 right Fifty. Um, I took away seventy five percent, and I got twelve and a half. So, if we're doing it specifically, you can say I, I was intimate with twelve dudes 
over three years um, and caught half a body, basically. So I was knocking down a dude every quarter, right? Interesting. I'm honestly not going to. I know dudes are probably going to have a problem with that. And I honestly do. But I'm not going to drill down too far into that. I'm just going to say. Prior to. This little experiment, because this is just a three year time span. And if we're going off of these numbers, you've racked up 12 and a half bodies, 12 bodies in three years. Um, so with this mindset, this, this, you just now started paying attention. Let's say you're about 30 years old. You just now started paying attention. What were you doing before that? All right. 25% of the time, that's, that's 12 bodies. So if you're paying attention and you catch 12 bodies, how many bodies were you catching when you weren't paying attention? That, that's a question that I have. Um, <laughs> listen, you got to do better than this. Delete this video. Go find a therapist and do the actual work to understand what it is that you need to be doing in these relationships. But that's just my opinion. To the next video, I'm out.